Breakfast with Paul Rosen. Our diets, our Western diets in America are just really, you just don't realize how poor they really are. What would you say to others who would like to feel better? Sometimes you need to find the instruction. That's where the testing and everything comes in, because without that knowledge, there's no way I could have got to the point where I'm at today. Straight talk about health. And then I start preaching and telling them what I've been doing. (laughs) And this guy named Paul Rosen has changed my life. With your host, Paul Rosen. By the way, the information contained in this program is not approved by the FDA, nor intended to treat, diagnose, or claim to cure any medical condition or dis-ease as defined by Western medicine. However... Skilled practitioners of many disciplines have found nutrition response testing to be a highly reliable, supportive technology for assessing the health and fitness of the body's functional system. So let's expand on this thought about your body being too acidic. Why is that a big deal? The theory in a nutshell is that alkaline or ionized water is a powerful antioxidant. And, of course, for those people who have looked at this a little bit, uh, a powerful antioxidant has surplus uh, electrons that can mop up, as it were, the dangerous free radicals that you've got coursing through your veins. Marketers claim alkaline water can correct excess acidity in your tissues, which can then prevent or reverse cancer, arthritis, and other degenerative diseases. So that's what they're talking about when it comes to acid and alkaline water. Research, however, throws a little, well, water on that theory, pun intended, (laughs) um, reveals a somewhat different observation. Acid-loving cancer cells, for example, have been successfully destroyed with acidic Agents. Is that counterintuitive then? It if is. If you're eliminating the acid in your body, are you eliminating something which can have benefits it for is, you? It is. It is counterintuitive. So things are not quite as simple as marketers of ionizers would have you believe. So let's take a look uh, 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 into this world a little bit of alkaline and acidity. As a clinician, me, who has helped really tons of folks who prefer to use safe, natural, and effective methods of healing to get well. The only thing that counts is results. Results is all that matters, consistent results. And restoring pH balance, if it's necessary, this is really important, is most effective when done with the help of a professional. Why? Because we, as individuals, don't have access to the tools, and truly the understanding to be able to do it on our own. Now, if you got an extra four grand out there and you want to go buy yourself an ionizer, right, um, fine, be my guest. But I can tell you, just as many people get into trouble as talk about how exciting their situation is. And furthermore, the real question is, how do you know, let's, let's make the assumption that you buy one of these things, and you start using it, chances are you've changed more than the pH of your water. What I mean by that is chances are you're watching your diet now. You've probably cut sugar out of your life, finally, once and for all. And you're probably eating more vegetables than you ever have in the past. And in other words, you've made a number of lifestyle changes. Maybe you've added some exercise to it and so forth. Plus, you're doing the uh, alkaline water. The question is, is that, is that intervention, adding the alkaline water, something you would be doing every day of the week for the rest of your life? How would you know when enough is enough? How would you know when to stop? Well, you wouldn't, and I think anybody who bought into that, who thought that alkaline water was a good thing for them, would figure, naturally, if a little is good, more would be better. Here's one of the downsides. One of the downsides is is that your stomach, uh, within which the water will ultimately get to, has to be the most acidic place in your body in order for there to be proper digestion, separation of minerals from the foods that you're eating, And if you cause the alkalinity in your stomach 
to uh, to rise or the acidity rather uh, to uh, be altered to to greater degree, you're basically going to destroy your digestive function, and, and so, you'll know you've been doing that if you're experiencing acid reflux or feeling of a acid stomach. Again, counterintuitive, right? Well, right. Because if what? you're if you're drinking alkaline water which is supposed to put out the fire, as it were, metaphorically, right? And you're actually experiencing the fire. The cuckoo clock goes off. The cuckoo clock, the cuckoo goes, cuckoo off. clock goes off. The perfect cuckoo, analogy cuckoo, right there. Cuckoo. So what, what we're trying to say here, or let me summarize, Paul, and make sure I have it clear in my mind, sure. is you do want a minimum acidic level in your body, especially in your stomach, because it's just part of your normal body process. Is that right? Correct. So if you're doing things maybe to take away from that, you're doing yourself more harm than good. Potentially. Not only that, because if you're not absorbing, if you're not um, uh, preparing your minerals in the proper way, uh, then you're going to adversely impact your immune system, which is what this is supposedly all about. So what do you right? mean by preparing your minerals? Well, that's, the stomach. That's what your stomach does. Yeah. Okay, so you're shutting down, yeah. by shutting down the acidic content, you may shut down the normal processes of your stomach. Digestion. And then, and then have these other issues. Exactly right. And as a side note, most individuals who experience acid reflux do so not because there's too much acid in their gut, but because there's too little. Now, remember, folks, I'm couching this in my experience of close to 27 years in the clinic. This is how I help people get well, because there's so much mis- and disinformation and oversimplification, which can get some folks into real trouble. And, you know, I I don't know about you, but I don't got a ton of $4,000, you know, just rolling around in a drawer, which is what some of these ionizers cost. And I'm going to explain how you can do it for much less expensive and not get involved in micromanaging your body's function because micromanaging your body's function um, is, uh, is basically um, a problem because it's almost always unsuccessful. We have no ability to micromanage our body's functions. It's... It's all on their own, baby. So what do you do? You have to micromanage, in effect? You're making your entire system healthy and therefore making these smaller systems healthy. I'm going to, I'm going to share the, the, the steps that you take, but it's really more about lifestyle, right? And less about adding some specific, thera- you know, what, is other, what, what may be, uh, you know, a faux therapeutic um, uh, strategy, like providing alkaline water, right? So, you with me? Yeah, I'm right with you. All right. So, um, again, as I said earlier, to understand alkalinity acidity, you have to know a little bit about what pH is, small p, capital H, pH. That's the way acidity and alkalinity is measured in the scientific community. So, a pH of 7.0 is considered neutral. Anything below that? Smaller number is acidic. Anything greater than that, a larger number, is alkaline. Now, what's the best way to measure either of these things in the body? Blood and saliva tests are the most accurate reflection of your pH level. In general, a study was done some years back, and it revealed that two-thirds of of the population is not balanced with respect to pH. Two-thirds? Two-thirds. Why, why is it so out of whack like that? Why do so many of us have this improper balance? Well, we were just talking about that, right? I mean, how much attention did you pay to yourself, uh, you know, with respect to what you ate when you were 20? Well, not a lot. Right. Not when a, you were 40. Ten. When you were 40. Well, but I also think that even if you're a relatively conscientious eater, you're watching your diet, maybe this particular factor isn't something you're keeping an eye on. No, you have to be intentional. You have to know what you're doing. You have, to, you have to actually put some attention on it. There's no such thing as, um, I mean, I've never met the person who is in the middle somewhere. So let me go way <laughs> you out. Either, you're either paying attention or you're not paying attention. 
that's just the way it is. I mean, I don't. <laughs> Let me go way out on a limb here and say that there are particular things you can do with your diet to help maintain a proper pH level. Is you're, that right? you're you're stepping ahead, but that's a hint. And I'm also going to step further ahead and say that there are probably particular things based on your individual needs you can do Correct. to help maintain that which balance. Is, which, and now you're getting into that micromanaging aspects. How the heck can you micromanage? I mean, how would you know how much acidity or how much alkalinity the body might need? Remember, this is literally an intervention. If you are intentionally consuming an acidic or an alkaline water, you are, you are taking a, a, a considerable, almost radical step right to intervene based on what based on a theory well that's based interesting on, to me that you call it radical because to me it almost seems like a placebo that you're just drinking this stuff and saying well this will help me oh, keep no. my proper oh, no. balance it's, no it has nothing to do with placebo but what are you actually when we're talking about alkalinity and acidity how does that translate into the body more than just acid or alkaline condition well it speaks to the calcium phosphorus balance Everybody knows how important calcium is. Maybe you don't know how important phosphorus is. Not at all. But both of them are very important. So why why is phosphorus important? That's not something I I normally think of as being even part of our system. Because the normal, the normal, um, uh, uh, I should say it, I I, want to do this in a a clear fashion. So the, the, the automatic regulating mechanism requires an acidifier when things are too alkaline and an, 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 an alkali, alkalifier, I don't even know if that's a word, when things are too acidic. Okay, that makes sense to me, actually. So calcium is the um, uh, alkalifier. I know that's a horrible, I don't even think that's a no, word. No, I think I'm following what you're saying. And phosphorus is the acidifier. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And they, they run around the body generally in a ratio of four to one. And that's what you want. Again, right. you want a balance like that. So again, how would you know? How would you know whether to increase your calcium or whether to increase your phosphorus? I wonder if there's some kind of testing you could undergo to possibly determine what your levels are and what you need to do possibly to make them better. It's called nutrition response testing. Good job. There you go. Yeah. In other words, to know whether or not. But we wouldn't really. E- we don't even really have to go there. Right, things are much, um, uh, much simpler than that. But that's one of the reasons why one of the probably one of the the the, the most common remarks that people who come to see me to get well ultimately uh, share once they start to see that they are getting well, and that is, you know, I, I knew that I couldn't do this on my own because I tried. I took this vitamin, I took this mineral, and I used this water, and I used this exercise, and I put it all together, and I still wasn't seeing much results, or I just saw my condition get worse and worse. Whatever that is, whether it's, you know, acid reflux or migraines or or, uh, any other digestive issue, uh, whether it's high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, whatever condition you're talking about. Right. If you if you're going to intervene, you better have some way of measuring on a regular basis whether that intervention, um, you know, is uh, still appropriate. Well, you said on a regular basis. Then, do you have to do the testing maybe every so often to make Absolutely. sure those balances are absolutely? And of course, in in a in a nutritional personalized nutritional healing program that 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 we put into place for each individual because each individual has their own uh, uniqueness. Then periodically there are, uh, you know, return visits after the first, uh, uh, you know, 12 visits of intense testing and supporting and getting, uh, you know, the right uh, uh, program on track. Then yes. Yeah. Because life continues. And it's the, it's the environmental factors which continue to affect us in ways we have no idea. What environmental factors? The air, the water, the food itself, the, um, uh, uh, 
the the electromagnetic fields that people uh, you hear this buzz about how they potentially might negatively impact you want to know how do these things uh, uh, affect our body's ability to manage itself right and blood tests and saliva tests will not ultimately give us that information